Now let's consider two implementations of synchronous up-down counters. Synchronous counter hardware takes on the following form. We begin fundamentally with our storage device or register. We can have n bits of those. We'll assume a d-type flip-flop as the basis for the register. And also assume that the trigger has been connected to our system clock. We'll then need some combinational logic to accept the present count value and then determine the next state that ought to be dropped into the register. And again, all of that would be an n-bit path to ultimately produce an n-bit output. Since this is an up-down counter, the decoder would consist of an adder and then a subtractor in order to be able to count downwards. So we say when the adder is engaged that we are incrementing the count and otherwise we are decrementing the count. So the version I'm going to draw here uses just one direction control. It will always be counting, but it, it can count either up or down. All right, the first lab view implementation is based on a 4-bit register here, and it's initialized to all false values. Or we can think of that as all zeros, if you like. Since it's a 4-bit array, that defines this path as being 4 bits wide. And here I'm making use of two items from the numeric palette. This gives us the adder and the subtractor. The decrement control uses the 2 to 1 mux effectively, or the lab view select, to pick which of those two is needed. So all of that implements the next state decoder. Now instead of doing the conversion to numerical and then conversion back to the array, it might be just as easy to go ahead and define an 8-bit register, but based on the U8 integer data type. Because after all, the 8-bit integer is nothing more than an 8-bit bus with the numerical interpretation attached. So that way it's not necessary to convert back and forth between arrays or Boolean arrays and numerical values.